Praise the Lord for more blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is 6-22-22. 22 22 A lot of twos in that. And today is our midweek miracle sermon in our ministry. We come before you two times in a calendar week. Once on a Sabbath and again during the midweek miracle. And thanks to Facebook Memories, I was just reminded that we started Midweek Miracle Services in uh, 2016. So we started uh, the, doing the Midweek Miracle Sermons in 2016 and uh, it was 2006. What's up, sir? It was 2006 when we started the um, online services and then our ministry, I got um, or ordained or validated or confirmed in 2000. So 2000, 2006, and 2016 and here we are doing still, excuse me, the Midweek Miracles Sermons. And I thank and praise God for keeping me faithful of a few things. Um, <laughs> it's amazing all the things that God will have you experience on this journey. But um, faithfulness is key. Thank God for His faithfulness. We'll be speaking on a subject entitled His Doctrine. His Doctrine. Uh, if you ever need to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call us at 614-847-2057 or by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com. Pray for us. we got some exciting times in the next couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got the, the, fam the annual event coming up this Sabbath. And then, then we have on 7-7, I'm getting married, and then... The month, the week after, a couple days after that, we have Miss Beverly's outreach. So it's going to be real busy, but bit good busy. So pray for us in our ministry as we continue to do what we believe God has called and created to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank and praise you for waking me up and allowing me to see another day. I woke up this morning with a hymn and song on my heart. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. I thank God for allowing us to be in the land of the living, Lord Jesus. Another opportunity. Life is taken so for granted. I get so many prayer requests throughout my day and people complaining about this and complaining about that. And it's, I'm always mindful of the fact of those who have passed on who used to give me prayer requests who no, no longer can give me prayer requests. And so it keeps me focused on the fact that no matter what's going on, that God is due all the glory, honor, and praise. Now as we prepared to share this word of the living God. I just pray that a light somebody is enlightened, inspired, encouraged to keep on keeping on in the name of Jesus Christ. Now a lot of words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Speaking on a subject entitled His Doctrine. His Doctrine. Upon studying and preparing for this word that I'm about to believe to deliver, um, I was reading and it was revealed to me while reading that people need to understand that when you're being taught the Bible that there are people who are teaching the Bible that don't teach it from the perspective that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would have them do it. So there are different doctrines. There's the doctrine of Jesus Christ and there's the doctrine of devils and there's the doctrine of men. So I'm going to share in Scripture so the hopefully and prayerfully people will understand what their what teachings they are following. The Bible reveals to us who choose to believe that are born again in Acts 17, 28 it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. So we live, for in him we live, we move, and we have our being. And Paul was saying, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are his offspring. And when I read that verse of scripture, I took myself back to all the different churches I was a part of growing up because we moved from West Virginia to Ohio. And then, you know, you know, whatever church my mom went to is where I obviously had to go to. And the different churches had different things they taught and believed in. You know, I was part of different denominations. And I didn't know anything about that because I was just a child going where my mom was taking me. But what I do remember 
is the different things that they taught based off of what they believed. You know, there were some where you, you know you wear white on the fourth Sunday, and, and, and as a child, you never ever touch that table furnishings because you would get persecuted to the to the tenth degree. There were some uh, that, that 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 only baptized on certain dates, and there were some. You know, I remember different things growing up, and as I matured in Christ, I come to realize that there were things, even as a child, that I knew men had made up that wasn't in the Bible. Not that I really knew the Bible, what the Bible was saying at that age, but when I grew up and started to study those things, I realized that the things that I was being taught as a child in church were, were could not be found in the, in the Word of the Living God. So I was thinking, like, why would a church or any church create rules, regulations, or have teachings that did not directly come from the Word of Living God, which is basic instructions before leaving the earth, B-I-B-L-E. One thing about us as believers is that when we share the Word with anybody, whether it's preaching, teaching, talking, or whatever, we, we can take them to the Bible and, and say what it says. Matthew 4, 4 says, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. So, God had them write down everything that he said. So, anything that we say that he said, we should be able to turn to and show them. See, it says right here, this, that, and the other. I, I hear in the Holy Ghost the example of when Philip went and spoke to the eunuch, was taken, to that, taken from the meeting and was talking to the eunuch. And the eunuch was reading reading a scroll of Isaiah, and he he didn't know. Philip asked him. Philip the evangelist asked him, "Do you know what you're reading?" He said, "How could I unless somebody teach me?" So we have to be mindful of the fact that the things that our God has said is written in the Bible. And I already know what has happened, but we'll, we'll wait to say it later. In Luke twenty four twenty seven, it says, "And beginning at Moses and all the prophets." So minor prophets and major prophets, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he, God, Jesus, Emmanuel, God in us, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That pretty much wraps everything up in a nutshell. Very undisputable fact, very known scripture in the New Testament for people who have a problem with the Old Testament, and beginning at Moses. So we know Moses is the Torah and the law. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, minor and major again, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So regardless of what people may say to you, what they may try to make you believe, when they try to teach you something that's not in the word of the living God, they're not talking about Jesus. Once again, I'm going to share with you in scriptures how there are doctrines of devils and there are doctrines of men. And you need to know the difference. There was a time in my life where I did not know the difference. I was just a child and they was just telling me anything. And I, I was beginning to believe it because they were put in the position to speak. So I, I, I just assumed that they were speaking from God's, what God was saying. Matthew 7, 28 said, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Verse 29, For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. When I was doing marketplace ministry yesterday, witness where <clears throat> a guy, you know, it's, it's like off the street, so you can, it's like a drive through People can pull up and talk to you, hang out their car and talk to you. Very clean cut, elderly, older white man pulled up. And he was just talking. I could tell he knew some scripture by the way he was talking. And we got in a conversation of why the t-shirts were only $5. And I said, uh, truth be told, I'm just, I've am just i just been obedient. The Lord told me 30 years ago to make the t-shirts $5 and they've been $5. And he says, well, he gave me this story about how one time he was giving half his paycheck to the church, whatever, and then he had a dream or something. And the Lord told him that... Um, his money was his money and that he didn't have to give half his paycheck. And, and, and in hindsight, and I was listening to him, I didn't feel led to rebuke him, but he was like, he was basically trying to tell me that I could raise the price of my t-shirts and there wouldn't be a problem with it. And this amazes, it amazes me how people will try to twist the word that God has given you to obey him. 
a little, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So for 30 years, I've been selling these Witness Wear t-shirts for $5. And throughout that 30 years, I've probably had a thousand people tell me I should raise the price from, from $5 to another amount of money. And it's amazing how people will try to get you to be disobedient and be polite about it. They're not being dis disgruntled. And I shared with him one scripture. I said, uh, out, of, out of Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice to hearken in the fat of, fat of rams. I said, I have to be obedient to what God has called me to do. I don't know what he's called you to do. And that almost goes along with his doctrine. See, when people teach you or share with you the word of the living God, if they can't tell you where they're coming from in the Bible, you should draw a deaf ear. So, in Matthew 7, 28 again, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, we're going to go back there in a minute, read the whole parable excuse me and it came to pass when jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his do doctrine so they were astonished at the doctrine of jesus christ and that's how the word of the living god is rather if i'm preaching it or if jesus christ back then when he was actually saying what was written down it astonishes you to hear the things that he said and did in the way he taught and then in 29 it says, For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, the scribes was just writing down. They were just writing down what was said and what was being done. They wasn't the author and the finisher of our faith. So it's different when it's coming from God, pretty much. It's different when it, God is the one who's telling you uh, by way of his Holy Spirit, by way of the Word, or even sometime through people what he is saying. It's, it's, it's some authority attached with it. How many people, I mean, if you're a believer and you're watching this, how many times in your life where, where you knew God was the one who was speaking to you and, and he could show you in his word what he was saying to you? That's where the confirmation comes from. The word doctrine means a belief or set of beliefs held or taught. That's the simplest definition. They got a lot of other definitions, but I don't want to get off into anything else a belief or set of beliefs held and taught that's why it's so important that when you're learning the bible that you make sure you're being taught from his doctrine so how many doctrines does the bible reveal now upon studying this you know you gotta be careful with google and internet sometimes because they're, they're 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 just like anything else they'll deviate and take you on a journey because I, I search the Bible to prove the Bible. I don't search the internet to prove the Bible. So you have to be very careful because the internet will take you on a little tangent and have you go on left field. It tried to, but they're talking about, well, there's eight doctrines. Well, there's nine doctrines. Well, these are doctrines. Because, like I said, the word doctrines means a belief or a set of beliefs held and taught. And so they'll take the definition of doctrine and run with it versus just sticking with the word doctrine. So in 1 Timothy... Chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So that right there reveals to us that there are doctrines of devils. And unfortunately, some people are following doctrines of devils. I know there are churches that are based off of doctrines of devils. If there is a church based off of an ab abomination of sin that God said that we cannot do or partake in, then the only thing they could be teaching is doctrines of devils. Now the Spirit speaketh especially in the latter times, sons shall depart from the faith. They've departed from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the Bible clearly revealed to us that there are doctrines of devils. So it ain't something I done made up. Like I said, when anybody show you anything or try to share anything with you, if they're not coming from the Bible, something's wrong. You need to show me where it says it, and, and the Holy Spirit will confirm if what you're saying is true. Because that's another thing. They got so many versions now. I done lost count. They done dumbed the Bible down so far. 
that the words don't mean what they used to mean. I don't fool with no all these other crazy versions. So Matthew chapter 15 verse 9 it says <clears throat> but in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men so the Bible clearly reveals and this is in red so we know who says it I'm gonna go back up and read a few more scriptures from that because that's pretty vague but I, you know you get the gist of that, that there was doctrines of men let's go back up to uh, 15 1 then came Jesus then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders <laughs> so they're saying it clearly why are your disciples transgressing the tradition of the elders for they wash not their hands when they eat bread Verse 3, but he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? See, he just separated his doctrine from their doctrine. He says, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So that right there lets us know they had created the tradition that was not from God. You got to understand something. The reason why we're even believers in the first place. This is what astounds me about what I know about the established church in some places. For some reason or another, man gets the idea that they can deviate from God. And to me, that is so scary. That is so scary to think that just because you rent in a building, you got some people coming once or twice a week, that you have the authority to change what all, Almighty God said in His name. I mean, when you think about the audacity of... That's, it's against the, the law to do that here. You can't... What's the movie Coming to America, you can't open up a McDowell's. There's a McDonald's and there's a McDonald's. They got the golden arches. We got the arches or something, whatever he said. They got the, the... You can't do that. It's against the law. So if it's against the land of the law to imitate, impersonate somebody for profit... Why do you think spiritually that you can impersonate Almighty God to deceive people into coming to where you got where you got your fellowship to, to collect money or filthy lucre basically? Because the only reason the person would do that is to, to be successful at it. If not, you can go on and do your own thing. But in the name of God, you got people doing things that God ain't never said and God ain't never done. And we'll try our hardest to get you to believe it. That's what he's telling them. Why do you also, in verse 3 and 15, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. And what's crazy about it, when you share the word with these people, they will rebuke you. Oh, we don't have to do that stuff no more. <laughs> when we all know the scriptures clearly say God doesn't change. For God commanded saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that is cursed, he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. <laughs> Excuse me. Verse 5, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Let me turn this fan off. Verse 6, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Now we read earlier how it was that the Bible talks about how he spoke with authority. And he just revealed to them how by the traditions of men they made they made God, you know, the commandment of God of non effect. That that that's that's that right there will explain why so many places do not operate in the gifts and callings of Almighty God because of the fact that they have made the word has no authority. That that that's also a scary thing that they, they, they create traditions and their own commandments to where the power of God has none effect. We say stuff in his name. We do things in his name. We do things to glorify him. We don't create things just to appease people in the name of people. Verse 6. Trying to call me while I'm preaching. 
Verse 6 and 15, it says, And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of non effect by your tradition. Your tradition. We spoke about it earlier, how it is that people have created their own thing outside the perfect will of God. To me, that is so scary as a preacher and a leader and a person that has these platforms to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why I thank God that God has given me the, 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 the teaching gift of exhortation where I literally read what the scripture says. And then if I want to connect something to it, I connect another scripture to it to help people understand where he said the foreshadow and the fulfillment. In other words, I'm not just making up what I want to say to get you to understand my point. Then this is what Jesus said to him, you hypocrites. <clears throat> well, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He says in verse 9 and 15, chapter 15, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Vain worship. Vain worship. That's one thing I constantly pray is, Lord, don't let me do anything in vain concerning you. I don't want to do anything for nothing. Going through the motions, you know, looking holy, trying to look pious or praying or singing or worshiping. Anything I'm doing, I don't want to do anything in vain. I don't want to love in vain. I don't want to, I've never been the type of person or I don't have the, was, wasn't given the characteristics to try to pretend with people. I want to be authentic in my praise and in my worship, in my studies and my prayers. I want to be very authentic. I don't want to do anything in vain. He says, but in vain do they worship me. Teaching for doctrines. Now remember, doctrines is a belief or teaching. So they're teaching people to believe something and they're worshiping him in vain. And But in vain do they worship me for teaching for doctrines. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. I, I've been in conversation with so many people throughout my journey. Excuse me. Where they try to explain to me why they do things that's not commanded by God just to get people in a building. Well, we have to do this because Jesus never did that. The Holy Spirit is what draws people to, to God. That's why all the pressure is taken off me when I'm preaching, when I'm teaching, when I'm doing evangelistic things. It's not, it's not my job to, to, to coerce or convince people to come to Jesus Christ. That's not what he has called us to do. When you are a fisher of men, he says, I will make you fishers of men. You go fishing. That's your job. Your job is to go and do what he's told you to do for bait. But it is not our job to change who God is to get people to come to Christ. Because when you do that, they're not coming to Christ. They're coming to what family and friends day. You know, I had this one guy years, 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 years ago. I don't want to say the church's name because, you know, I love the people there, unfortunately, but what they did was so wrong to this young man. I, I got him to come and visit the church. He he got emotionally caught up in the spirit and he, he went up and got saved and he, he got baptized in the water and they talked him into going and, and tarrying for the Holy Ghost. And he did all of that. And then when we um was leaving, was walking out, he says, man, I ain't never coming back here again. I'm like, to me, everything was fine. I'm like, why not? What happened? He says, man, when I went back in that room, that lady told me to, when I came out to tell everybody I got the Holy Ghost. And he didn't. He, he says, she told me. So... Even if him being drawn by, by the Lord was genuine to go up to the altar and to give his life to the Lord, and even if he was compelled to submit to being baptized in the water, he did not like the fact that the lady who was tearing with him for the Holy Spirit had told him what to say to people to trick people when they got back out into the main sanctuary to make people get excited about them. And it upset me so bad because it, it, we don't have to do that. We don't have to convince. We don't have to coerce. We don't have to get into a numbers game. Because I honestly believe genuinely he was ready to give. Because he, no one made him get up. No one made him go to the altar. You know, he submitted to the baptismal part, the water baptismal. But when, but when, then when he got to the other part, you know, I was like, man. You know, and honestly, to this day, I don't know if he ever, you know, where his stance is with the Lord. But that, that's how dangerous that could be. You could literally turn people away. 
but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So we've seen the doctrines of devils in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now we see the doctrines of men in Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Let me read a couple more. On the, on the, and there's uh, quite a few on the um, doctrines of men. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. And the Lord was it was warning us through these gospels how it is. The Bible talks about there are some that has crept in amongst us. I mean, it, it's big business. You know, people don't want to talk about it like that, but it, it, the gospel is big business. You can affect people's lives one way or another because they have their guard down because you feel the power of God drawing you and you know you need to make a change. And some people take advantage of that. It's like when I used to work at OSU Hospital as an officer. When a person come in that door in the emergency room for help, I mean, they're wide open. You know, you can lead them to any, any department in that hospital for help. But you can almost do anything to them and subscribe them any kind of, they just want help. And that's how it is when people sometimes are coming into the faith. Is that they're wide open they just want help. And some people take advantage of that fact that people want help. And start teaching them what they want them to learn versus what the scriptures say. And that's dangerous. So out of Mark 7, 7 through 13, it says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men. He's letting them know you're holding the traditions of men. So that lets us know that man had created some traditions right next to the things of God, close enough to deceive people into thinking the things they was doing was of God. And I was a victim to that growing up because we celebrated every pagan holiday in the house of God that there was on the calendar. I remember as a, as a child in the basement of church bobbing for apples on the pagan holiday of Easter. I remember doing that. And we didn't know any better. We didn't realize that it was supposed to be Passover and celebrating Passover. I didn't understand that. But they did, they did, they did things close enough to it. <clears throat> and growing up, they also had, you know, we didn't obviously do Halloween. So what they did was Hallelujah, uh, whatever. They, they, man created things close enough to the world and close enough to the church. To, and it, that, that stuff is wrong. Anytime you take away from the Bible, which Revelations talks about, anytime you add to or take away, you're wrong. We don't have to sell Jesus to nobody. We just preach and teach it the way it is written and let it stay. Let, let the chips fall where they may. Whoever's supposed to be saved is going to be saved. And whoever is not, is not. Mark 7, 7 says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as of washing of pots, cups, and many other such like things ye do. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. And that's the way it is because you cannot serve two masters. You will have to reject the commandments of God in order to do the things that you're doing. And that's another revelation point because you got to realize if somebody is doing their own, they've made up their own form of godliness and have their own commandments, they've had to reject God to create their own. Because they knew they had to do something. I have to come up with something. So this is what we're going to do. I just had somebody tell me. Oh that, this is what we do. I mean I'm like. We are part of the body of Jesus Christ. And the hand is connected. This thumb can't take off and go down the street somewhere. And talk about I'll see y'all later. No you're part of this hand. This hand is part of this arm. This arm is part of this. This, this shoulder. This shoulder is part of this body. It's, we're connected. You can't just disconnect yourself. And say this is what we do. You're either part of the body of Jesus Christ or you are not. In verse 9 again, he said to them, Full well you reject the commandment of men that you may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth his father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say unto his father and mother, It is Corban, that it is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. 
So he's explaining how it is that they, they, they created something that God didn't create. In other words, saying, this is, like I said, this is so scary to me. Well, God didn't really say that. He meant this. I mean, we have preachers and teachers out there doing this stuff, family. Verse 12, and you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Verse 13, making the word of God of non effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such things do ye. I remember when I got the faith, and it took me to have faith because I was trying to be an obedient Christian growing up. It took me to have faith to walk out of some places that wasn't preaching right, it wasn't talking right. Because we feel so obligated to Jesus, sometimes we'll stay at wrong places. And that's sad. It is sad because if somebody starts talking crazy or not talking right, you need to kick rocks. I mean, you need to get out of there quick, fast. You don't owe man nothing. We owe Jesus Christ everything. And I remember when I had the faith, and I had a pastor one time say, Hey man, I seen you leave. Where'd you go? I said, Well, I had to go, man. You know what I'm saying? You're up here talking crazy. Preacher one time going to open, his, open the Bible, says, turn to Hebrews, such and such. And I turned to my Bible to Hebrews, and they walked completely away from the Bible and started rebuking people for being on Facebook the whole sermon. I was like, wow. I'm reading Hebrews like, I don't see none of it, what you're saying, bro. I'm like, you told me to turn to Hebrews, and you ain't read near scripture out of Hebrews. Told us to turn to Hebrews and spend an hour rebuking people for being on the internet. I was like, you lost your mind. Well, I ain't never coming back to this place again. One more from man, the doctrines of man. So we talked about the doctrines of the devil. Now this is our third scripture on the doctrines of man. Colossians 2.22. And it reads on this wise. Well, I don't want to just read 22. I want to go up. Let's go to 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. 22. Which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and the doctrines of men. So not only did that, that scripture reveal Again, the doctrines of men, but it also reveals what's going to happen to the doctrines of men. It literally reveals what will happen. And I hate to say it, but some, some of these places are mega. Ain't talking. I mean, it, 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 and you got to have, the Bible says he to have an ear to hear. That's what I hear the Holy Spirit. He that has an he, ear to hear. You have to be hungry and thirsty for the true unadulterated word of God. Because if you're not, you will get deceived by these jackleg folks talking.